Hi everyone, and welcome to this session of Kaplan's USMLE Step 2 CK Q-Blast. My name is Dr. Matt Alvin. I'm an incoming medical intern going into radiology and here to help you get that higher score come test day. Let's get started. We've got a 59-year-old ranch hand, so not just any guy, but somebody that works on a ranch, presents to the outpatient department with chest pain. All right, obviously big differential here. Over the past eight months, so not just a few days or a few weeks, but eight months, he's noticed a dull central chest pain that radiates to his left arm and jaw while walking. The pain subsides after about two minutes of rest, quickly returns upon walking again. So he's just got this pain he's been dealing with it for eight months, and now he decides to present today. So this isn't something emergent where he comes in and says, oh my gosh, doctor, I have tons of chest pain. This is some guy that's saying he's had it for eight months. It's severely affecting his work. He's concerned he's gonna lose his job because of the poor productivity. So that's why he's coming in to see you. So then we have more stuff. Again, a longer question, but don't be intimidated by it. Remember, your goal is to pick out these little things that I've bolded to make sure that you're able to focus on just what's important. So it says his vital signs are temperature looks normal, 37, pulse looks normal, 74, blood pressure, 135 over 82. He's in that pre-hypertensive range, definitely up there, but he's not hypertensive. He, he gets a stress test, okay? Definitely something that would happen with an eighth month history of chest pain. What does it reveal? ST segment depression in leads one, AVL, V4, V5, and V6. What does all that mean? That's your job to know. Aspirin, nitrates, and metoprolol are initiated. A 12 hour fasting serum LDL cholesterol concentration comes back as 140. Is that high? Is that low? Is that normal? Again, something that you gotta know come test day. He's also started on a Torvastatin and advised to implement a low-fat diet. Two months later, he comes back, still experiencing the chest pain during exercise. However, he states his productivity actually got better. It's increased. That's a good thing. That's what he came to you for. His resting pulse is 58 per minute. Why did they give you that? Also an important thing to consider. The echo reveals an ejection fraction of 55%. Again, is that normal? Is that abnormal? They give you a lot of numbers in this question, and this is all based on how hard did you study to get all this stuff down to be able to attack this question quickly and efficiently like a good test taker should. And the question is just, what's the next best step in management, right? So you've got this guy, he's come to see you, you do the stress test, give him some medication, he comes back because he's doing a little bit better, but he's still having chest pain during exercise. So remember before, he just had that chest pain during walking, now he's having it just during exercise. So you helped him out a little bit, he wants you to help him out a little bit more. What are you gonna do? What's your next best step in management? Are you gonna give him another drug and perform per percutaneous transluminal coronary angiography? Turifibin, another drug, coronary angiography, lisinopril, or do a cabbage, coronary artery bypass graft. What are you gonna do? You're the doctor, this guy comes to see you. What's your next best step in management? Take a few moments and select what you think is the best step. Okay, great. So the answer to this question is choice C, coronary angiography. All right, so you're gonna send this guy to get an angiography, an angiogram, all right? So number one, what does this guy have? He's got stable angina. That should have jumped out to you. Eight months having this chest pain, those ST depressions on the stress test, that indicates we've got stable angina going on here. Chest pain that happens doing some sort of exertion, first walking, then exercise. This guy's got stable angina. What do we do to treat it? Just like you did in the question, aspirin, nitrates, beta blockers. But biggest thing, why did they tell you that final resting pulse of 58 per minute? Because when you give somebody the beta blocker, that maximal goal heart rate is between 55 and 60 beats per minute, which he's gotten, and you give him a statin too. If after all of this, after all this maximal medical therapy, and the guy still comes as he did to you, saying chest pain, you gotta get an angiogram. You gotta find out, is there blockage? Where's that blockage at in the heart? What the angiogram does is it maps out those diseased vessels and dictates what you're gonna do for this guy. You're gonna give him an angioplasty, you're gonna put a stent in, that's why you get the angiogram. If it shows left main coronary disease, two or three vessel disease, 
you're going to be a cabbage for you're going to be a candidate for a cabbage. Again, differences between a cabbage or just putting in a stent or angioplasty. Stuff to know. An ACE inhibitor would be appropriate, but his EF is uh, greater than 50%. It's only appropriate if the EF is left uh, less than 50%, or if he had diabetes, hypertension, or proteinuria. A lot of different criteria to take from this question. Keep all this stuff straight as you evaluate these cardiac patients. A recap for this question. You're there, you're the doctor, you institute maximal pharmacologic therapy, so the nitrates, the beta blocker, the statin, the aspirin, you get that heart rate to the goal of 55 to 60 beats per minute, the guy still comes in with symptoms, next step is perform the coronary angiography. The extent of his coronary disease, that blockage, is going to dictate whether you're going to do an angioplasty, put a stent in, or do a cabbage, which one is indicated, that's your goal come test day. Great job on this question for Kaplan's USMLE Step 2 CKQ Blast. I'm Dr. Matt Alvin. Happy to be with you here on your journey to get that higher score on test day. Good luck studying, and I'll see you next time.